Uh, just making sure that you map out your sections really, really well. So what we'll do first off is we're gonna cut across the top. We're gonna to start right in here. I'm gonna take a central section and then I'm gonna work all my sections until I hit kind of like the rounds of the head. And the rounds of the head kind of happen right here. So the first thing is, is to cut this top right the way through. So let's do something a little clean with a scissor and then uh, we can actually um, show you that you can do clean work with scissors as well as doing, you know, kind of razor work. And we're also gonna show you, um, you know, how I work. So this is my razor comb and I don't have a scissor comb here, so guess what I'm doing? I'm gonna go and find one. Come on, Kate, come with me. Come with me. Let's see what's in the candy store. Yes, oh, this is our, this is our rack. We're gonna be selling this rack. It's got our diffusers, our brushes, clips, combs, grips, you name it, and... There it is. There it is, my scissor comb. Right off the rack. Right off the rack. I'll pay later. <laughs> oh, thanks for later. the support on the elf ears, Todd. I, Say that again? Todd gave me some support on, he says, love elf ears on, oh, on woman. Love what? Elf ears on woman. Oh, elf ears. <laughs> People pay for... She's not a woman. <laughs> and also a great model. Agreed. She's a great model. Aww. Thank you. <laughs> she really is. And you may, if you've been tuned into Brooklyn Live, we've used Schmack Daddy, Schlumbag Daddy many times. All right, so... Gabby says, nice rack. Yeah, oh, thank you. <laughs> Talking about you, Isabel. <laughs> It is a nice rack. It's a lovely rack. It's a lovely rack. Comb is straight off the rack. Straight off the rack. The <laughs> comb is straight off the rack. So let's come right in with my uh, B Max shears and let's take this first section right the way through. I'm going to lift it back right at the front. I'm actually teaching a classic cutting class in Los Angeles in March the 22nd and 23rd. We're also going to be doing our American Wave class on March 23rd in Los Angeles. So if you want to come for education uh, with, with me and you want to do some scissor work, I'd love to see you there. All right, so there's your first section. Now let's take section number two. This is a traveling guide. So section number two is gonna come right into section number one. First one that we cut was section number one, and now we're gonna go down section number two. And we're just lifting this hair straight up, and I'm gonna follow that guide right the way through to the front. Notice how I go on the outsides of the fingers, then I come on the insides of the fingers. Inside is gonna give you a tighter and a better control. So I'm gonna stay focused on that. This equipment is my Brooklyn equipment. I have different tools in different places because I work in all three of my locations. So uh, it's nice. These are the classic five inch BMAC shears. So they're Erosio branded. It's what we give to all of our students because we have two cosmetology schools here in New York City. And uh, we just had a new class start last week, and they're pretty awesome. Actually, they started this week. They're pretty awesome. And if you're interested in a career in hairdressing, definitely check out Erosio. And we also started our new aesthetics program, which is super hot. And right now we are putting together a new barber zone for our barbering program, which we already teach at our schools. But when it comes to barbering, you can come and see us at the Connecticut Barber Show, which is in May. So I'm gonna continue through the top. I've got two more sections. I'm gonna come on the opposite side. What I'm gonna do, because Isabel is on the other side, I'm gonna send you over to check out Isabel and see what Izzy's got planned. We've got two cuts going on today, so we should have a lot of fun. Ooh, hey guys. Hi. Okay, so this is my lovely model, Vivian, AKA Bim. <laughs> And yeah, I'm working with the razor today. I'm going to show you some classic layering, kind of like 
working like a shag technique, so working from the front, I want to create something that's visually um, quite square in the silhouette, which I think will be really cool and interesting. So I've started off by taking sections like diagonal back in this first left side and basically just using a little bit of elevation, just coming through to kind of take a little bit of the bangs away and open up this area of the face here. So this was all really heavy. Vivian's got a lot of hair, so I can definitely like open the blade quite a lot and really remove a lot of that internal weight. So my first section through here, I'm just coming up to in front of the ear, turn around here a little bit. Start by lifting the hair. Have your head, have the head position slightly below where you're where you're cutting, really, so you can control um, your technique, and also you can see your guide from the underneath. And so, lifting this part that's in front of the ear, I want to keep. I want to retain a little bit more length through here to keep these cute little features. So using a little bit of elevation there to keep that length and then working from my guide nice and open with the razor down towards the length. Next section working back. Again, you can really use elevation depending on how much you want to remove internally. So definitely want to lift lots of the weight out of the hair and create lots of texture. And you can see, you can see the guide there, okay? So just let the hair from the underneath fall down, open with the razor, and then working across and around to the ears. Now you'll see as well, working, when you take your guide from the top of the head here, you can see where the short area is, and you wanna kind of bend from the heel to the tip of the razor. And just using that forefinger of my right hand as well. So it's giving you that really nice gentle touch when you hit the hair. It's going to make your work nice and, and soft and delicate. <laughs> okay, and then just keep the hair quite damp as well. So how did you guys meet? How did you meet Viv? So me and Viv actually met through the insta world and we have a what's your insta world. handle um blood twin blood twin blood twin yours blood twin <laughs> and you have a twin no <laughs> only in brooklyn <laughs> In Brooklyn, we all call each other by our Insta handles. Oh, that right? that's going to be so intense. <laughs> What's yours? Donut lover with two R's. Do you have one to sit on and drive in your car? A donut? Yeah. Oh, God, I don't have a car. I haven't had a car in four years. I miss it. Where's the name donut lover come from? Just love in them since I was young. Wow. You love the donuts. Donuts. On Sundays, my family used to let me get donuts after church. Okay, so I'm just gonna. Christian donut lover. And blood twin. Edith Pop donut lover, blood twin. <laughs> Follow us all. <laughs> okay, so my last two sections, you can see I'm really pushing the head forward here so I can kind of use that elevation so the hair is definitely lifting the weight further back so it's not all coming to the front it's not going to be too heavy and i'm going to actually just repeat this through this other side as well so i can hand you back to Uncle Nikki. <laughs> i hope he's got the hydro mist we I love sure the hydro mist all right so i kind of cut the top so i cut the top starting from the center lifting straight up so we cut that short we worked out to each kind of edge as the head started to round, I stopped. And uh, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run that all the way down, all the way through. So let's run a channel right the way through. I wanna get over the crown where the hair grows very strongly. A 
lift this right up. I'm gonna follow the head shape. So I'm gonna follow it. It's nice, takes me back cutting with scissors. It's a lot of fun. I use scissors a lot. I still do a lot of clients every day in the salon. Uh, probably around about 30 clients a week is still on my uh, roster. How do you find the time? Well, I just work. Yeah. I fly. I go. I have no choice. I got to keep doing it. I'm going to follow this all the way down. I want to keep some softness on the edges. So really, I'm just working on internal shape. If I spin that section around just a little, I think you should be able to see that, yeah? Yes. And I'm just going to lift that straight out. And I'm going to cut right in. Just keep it nice and clean. When you're working in such a small area and you're working so close to the head, you need a smaller shear, a smaller scissor. And that's what we have. I'm going to worry about that later. I'm just going to continue to kind of work through. Using the Hydro Mist helps me to keep my sectioning cleaner uh, and it won't over kind of it won't put too much product in the hair. You won't feel the residue in the hair. It's a conditioning spray. And we use that as our, as our lotion for helping us and aiding us when we cut. I sell it to my clients as a detangler. It has an amazing fragrance. And the clients really do enjoy it. So sit your fingers in. We call this finger tight because I'm sitting my fingers in onto the head. The head, the head shape, the hair grows around. It's like the signature. Uh, you know, it's the, like a fingerprint. So the crown area will move, but really I'm literally cutting this finger length all the way around. So I'm, the hair will move. I'm not trying to create any over direction or any weight build up here. I just really want to sit the hair in nice and, nice and tight and flat. And then I'm just gonna follow that through. If you work with the hair damp, it's easier to map out. It's too short for clips. So learn how to do practice really great combing. I am gonna keep some softness in here. So I'm just literally working to just below the occipital bone. I'm gonna rotate around. So a slight rotation. So we're heading out to Long Island on the 15th of March. We have a program that we call Up Close with Nick. It's a two hour session. Tickets are $35. It starts off with a 30 minute business talk. And then we go into American Wave, our texture service. And then after American Wave, I will do a scissor and a razor cup. And then we finish with a Q and A. It's been very successful. We did this program in Buffalo. And we've also done this program recently in North Carolina, Charlotte. So we'd love to see you. Come and support us, get some afternoon inspiration because it's not an evening event, it's a daytime event. That means, you know, it starts at uh, one, goes to three. And There's a link from Orojo Cosmo. Thanks for always being on it with the links. Orojo Cosmo, we see you. Oh, they did it. Oh yeah, they're on it. We're pros, baby. <laughs> yeah. Notice right here, I'm just lifting the hair away, just to drop. Just to leave a little bit more length around, around the hairline here. So I'm not doing a clean crop. I'm doing a little bit more of a, you know, wispy inspired Chelsea, Chelsea crop. Where it's a little wispy on the ends. This is the classic scissor comb available at erosiopro.com. Made by Ceci Bon. We have three cones on our website that we work with and use. We have the Sessi Bon Red, which is my scissor cutting comb. And then my black and my white comb is a comb bank. And that's my razor comb, which I probably think Isabel is using. She's got the razor comb. She's got the razor comb. So what's the difference? The difference is um, this is smaller. 
so it's easier to manage. This is slightly longer, works better for a razor. This has uh, zero tension, where this has more of an uh, even tension, and this has tight tension and tight tension. So it's a smaller comb, it's more refined for scissor cutting. This is a razor comb, more refined for razor cutting. You want more looseness when you razor cut, but both types of cutting both need the fine teeth. And also the depth's very important. If the comb's too deep, you can see this one's a little deeper than this one. If it's too deep, you can't use what we like to refer to as the spine of the comb. You need the spine for tension. So you need this because you high tension cutting for both. That got a bunch of thumbs up. People liked the comb comparison. Oh, right, like, good. Yeah. yeah seven, eight, I think it's eight or 8.50. Two different prices. So there's a 50 cents price, for price difference too. So now I'm gonna to continue to work around. Keep your sections very clean. Yeah, be very methodical. I was teaching in the cosmetology school yesterday and uh, I was teaching classic square layer to my students. It's amazing to see them learn how to pick up hair. Looks easy, not as easy as it looks to be consistent, especially when you're a newbie. It took me back to when I was learning at Vidal Sassoon and uh, back in the 80s and uh, it gave me me my memory, refreshed my memory of when I couldn't even follow a straight line. It was so difficult. But now I'm a little bit better, thankfully. So now I'm going to work to the front. See how you kind of manipulate? By keeping the hair damp, it's easy to comb the hair and control it. And we like to call this, this is like palm to palm cutting. If you come in my scissor class, we do a lot of palm to palm cutting. It means that your palm is facing your palm and you get a lot more structure. I've left the outline out. I'm gonna do more to that later. I'm trying to work in much more on just the mechanics and I'm gonna run this right the way through. So stay with me as we do that. And then we'll hand you over to the princess of Brooklyn. <laughs> right here, that's not palm to palm. I'm on the outsides of the fingers. That would be palm to palm, yeah? And then as I come in here, I come inside my fingers. Body position is very, very important. Control is very important. And your body position helps you understand how to control the hair because it will aid you in the right way to cut if the body position is understood. When the body position isn't understood, then it's a lot harder. Now you'll notice how I came in, and if you look at my fingers, they're slightly curved, slightly curved away. So I can keep all of that kind of softness around the edges. Because right now, I'm really not putting any emotional, creative feel into my work, what I'm really doing is just creating a cleaner structure to the shape. And then I'll start to look at the shape. Once I've layered the whole thing, then I'll start to look at the shape and that's when I'll start to add my kind of personal touch. But right now I wanna get this to sit in quite flat. So my sections are rotating around and I'm following that right the way through while still retaining all this length. This is gonna come in tighter, but right now it's really just a question of, we've got two thirds of the cut done because I did the top, I've done this back to the side, and uh, then we're just gonna rinse and repeat on the opposite side. I'm running this into the top to make sure that we're correct. It's like a little, when I, in the salon like this, I book on the 45 minute. So in the salon, this is a 45 minute exercise. Right now, I'm just gonna come through and just refine. A little cross checking. And I work it all the way up. And really, I'm just cleaning, just cleaning the hair. And you look at the hair, because the hair will actually tell you whether you've got it correct or not. If the hair's not lying properly, Maybe you've just over-directed it slightly in the wrong direction. 
So there you go, you can kind of see the sharpness coming right the way through. We've still got all this length here and all this length here. There's a lot of work to be done around there, but I don't wanna, I don't wanna ruin that just yet. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna continue on the opposite side and I'll follow this through and maybe you can head back over to the princess of darkness. <laughs> Let's check back in with our razor cut with Izzy and Viv. How's it going? Okay, so I've just finished my front two sections and I'm working into the back now. This is where, obviously where the most hair is. So I definitely want to um, really free this up a little bit and create lots of um, movement in the hair. And working on a slight diagonal that crossover, but don't have the section too diagonal. I think I feel like the razor can come and hit it in the wrong way. It's kind of too angular, the section. So on a slight diagonal and then lifting to keep that square shape, like I said earlier, um, just lifting all the outlines nice and high. And you can see the hairline here is um, very, very jumpy. So you want to retain a little bit of weight there um, if you go too much into that, I feel like it'll become too texturized and uh, maybe a little hard to manage. Um, so yeah, keep the hair nice and damp, like I say. And I'll just show you. So with my section, I'm working from my guide, which is going to come from this part. And you can see from the shorter piece of the hair here, I start to cut the air for the hair we like to say. Keep it nice and open through here. And especially in these areas here, as you work towards the back, you can see it's a lot more, there's a lot more hair, so you can really um, open that blade. And what I mean by that is, it's very open strokes, so the strokes are a lot larger than a closed, yeah? And then elevation through the bottom to keep that nice corner in the outline. And I'm just going to continue this to where I've worked to, fact, to kind of the crown to nape and cross the two lengths together. And then as well, move your body position. So as you move the chair around, you work towards the back of the head. Just pivot yourself around a little bit so you're not over directing too far to the side what we'll do is make the middle part too heavy so you've got to keep that body position pivoting around the chair and i've completed this on the left side of the head so i'm actually just finishing my back right side and then through here again, you can see the guide through the underneath as it starts to fall down. Start to cut on top of that guide and don't slide your fingers out if you want to continue on the guide. If you start to slide the fingers, you'll really lose that and create a new, a new layer, which is not what I want today. You can see here, right? Mm-hmm. And then as it starts to come into the nape again, you want that middle part to sit much flatter and then keep that corner in the bottom. And through the front section as well, I just wanna show you through here, like where the corners of the cheekbones are. I just almost keep looking at your work, you know, as it starts to develop and like move the hair around. Vivian definitely doesn't wear a hair flat and smooth so you've really got to move the hair around as you go through and see where the see where it's landed see where the weight lies and you can kind of slice down the hair a little bit with the razor to um open it up a bit more and i think it's really fun to do this technique with the razor it's like gives it this really edgy texturized finish which i love So I'm just going to finish this back right side and then I'll do, we'll come back and I'll do a little bit of like personalization throughout the whole technique. But yeah, I'm almost finishing up here now, guys. Looking great over here. 
let's pop back in and see how they're doing. You can just pop back in. <laughs> pop back in and see how we're doing. Oh, yes, this is Kate filming. Hello, Kate from New Hampshire. Kate Goldsboro. <laughs> we have the same name. Kate. Hello, Kate. How are you? All right. See what I'm doing now? Just cross checking. Knocking out a little bit of the corner. Let's just go over the whole thing. Outsides of the fingers. Just going to cross check. Check for balance. Cleaning up. Oh, look, see this little piece here? We're not going to cross check that, we're going to cut that. So we're sectioning it, we're looking at the fingerprint of the hairline. There it is. We take that away. Look at the hair. Don't cut corners, cut hair. We have a creative show coming up on February, on March the 8th. Erosio Underground. If you're looking for something edgy, creative, and see some of the creative expression of our hairdressers and people within our network, Erosio Underground, it's going to be March the 8th in our Tribeca location. I think there's six videos already made. I've gotten Good sneak video. peeks. They look have pretty you, cool. Have you, look, have you got sneak peeks? You're a sneaker peeker. <laughs> you sneaker peeker. So, okay, so we got this. Now, um, <clears throat> Edith's hair grows strongly. You can see the crown area here. It grows real strong right the way through. So let's just have a look at this. Let's cross check it over. And look at my body position. I'm behind and I'm over -headed. Now I didn't run everything all the way down because I've still got like some stuff here. I don't know who cut a hair last. That's why I was, I was thinking that somebody had a little bit of a home do. But she's a creative coach. She's With her boyfriend's, kid. what was it? Oh, his clippers. His clippers. With her boyfriend's clippers. <laughs> you know where they've been, don't you? <laughs> On his back. <laughs> What's up with your back, savage? <laughs> clippered. Yeah. And they've also been on the head too. <laughs> yes. Uh, you know, boyfriend, boyfriend. Yes, that was your boyfriend. If that's your boyfriend, if that's your boyfriend, if that's your boyfriend. It wasn't last night. Okay. Do you know that record? It's before your time, Kate. It sounded like Prince. I don't know what that it was. It sounded like Prince, but it wasn't Prince. <laughs> yeah. It was not Prince, but it sounded like Prince. And then I'm teaching my classic cutting program in Los Angeles on the 23rd of March. And then I'm also teaching Razor Fundamentals here in New York City at the end of March, two day class, classic razor training. So lots of education for Nick this year, which is fun. All right, so we've kind of done most of, although I could still you know, do a little bit more, but we've done most of the internal cutting. Now it's time for me to work on detail. So she's got a big, a lot of hair in here. So I'm gonna damp that hair down. I'm gonna look and see, I'm gonna start working first and foremost. Is that a rat tail? Is that what they call that? Yes. Love it. Bringing them back. <laughs> They're very popular here in, uh, in Brooklyn. <laughs> Rat's tails. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is let's have a look at this and see what we can do. So I'm just gonna make sure my client is feeling comfortable. What I like to do is don't blow the hair off because it goes everywhere. Just shake that off. And then let's reset. Keep your client clean. Client doesn't know the difference between good and great, but she knows the difference between good and great when it comes to you know the way in which you and kind of work with your client, very important. Todd says to leave the rat tail. Leave the rat tail on the back. <laughs> okay, so this is what we're gonna do. I'm spin around for Kate. I'm gonna connect in here. Now the head slightly dipped in. That enables me to get my fingers in. So I can manipulate my fingers in. And I'm taking that all the way down. 
and then I'm just gonna let a little bit of length fall out. Next section, I'm following the shape of the head. Put my finger in, and then I just follow that all the way down. Fine teeth. And short little strokes. Notice how the thumb doesn't even go in the scissor. And notice the range of motion that you have. And you need to work on that because we're working in small spaces. Yes, yeah, so you've got to be able to tuck in, tuck and roll. You've got to be able to tuck in, you've got to be able to get that structure right in. And uh, we're taking it in nice and clean around the occipital, but actually allowing the hair to drop out right on the hairline. And the hairline will kick and flick, and I'll deal with the length that we've left once I finish blending this in. Okay, so tuck and roll and kick and flick. You got it. I got it. So you see, I can keep that length, and then I can play with it. And by working with the hair wet or damp, I get much better control. Don't let the technique ruin the cut. So keep an eye. Now it's, I said earlier when I started, when I worked inter internally in here, it was very robotic. It was very methodical. Now I'm starting to think a little bit about uh, the creativity of the cut. So what that means is I want to make sure, and I don't know about keeping all of this. I like the idea of keeping this. I like the idea of keeping some of that. I don't know about keeping that. That piece, yeah, maybe. You know? Yeah. So just let me get a little bit of uh, hydro so I can have a look and let's approach that. I have an Einstein quote for you. You do? I do. What is it? It's creativity is intelligence having fun. Wow. So what we're doing here is uh, creativity, having fun. <laughs> Intelligence, creativity, <laughs> having fun, is that right? I think, wait, creativity. Something like that. Something like that. Einstein said it. Einstein. <laughs> where was he from? Uh, guys, Einstein, where is he from? Come on. Germany. <laughs> was he from Germany or was he from Austria? Do we know? Um, hello from Peru. Nice. Let's watch what I'm doing here, Peru. It's my friend. I'm now turn the scissors round, and I just point cut. Keep that length. I came right over the top of the ear, and I'm just lifting that out, and I'm doing a little texture cutting, little point cutting, because I want it to be short over the ear. So I work through here. Now I'm going to tighten that up. I don't need to texture point cut into that just yet. Keep all that length here. I'm going to do stuff with that. But right now what I've done is I've got that shortness in here. So let me show you how I do that. And I'll come to you, Kate. I'll show you how I do it. Chin looks slightly tucked in. And now right in here, I'm going to take this out. So right now we've shortened it around the ear and that's gonna make the back look longer and it's also gonna give it a little bit more uh, definition to the shape. And point cutting just gives you a little bit more freedom to be a little looser. You don't wanna have the hair soaking wet because you can't see what it's doing. But you can see right here what's doing. Even if you wanted to point in, you can now just point in. Notice I'm holding the ear gently and I'm resting the scissor on my finger. Beautiful. So I can just nip in a little tighter around the ear. This is reminding Ian of a haircut you did in Manchester and oh, it blew everyone away. Remember that Ian, a long time ago. <laughs> Was it 1985 or 86? Yeah. I remember doing it a 
as Vardira or Vardira? What is that? As a Vardra. Yeah. Yeah, Vardra. In England, what used to happen at Vidal Sassoon was when you was towards the end of your training, you became what they called a Vardra. And a Vardra was like a baby Jedi in training. <laughs> for uh, to be a hair cutter. In those days where hair cutting uh, had panache and I had a lot more, uh, I think it had a lot more uh, notoriety in the, uh, in the 80s for hair cutting. Hair cutting is kind of like a forgotten art. Hair colors become the, the magical trick, but we're gonna fight back for hair, for hair cutting. You can't buy it on the internet. You can't buy a haircut on the internet, right? You can't buy a haircut. You're such a philosopher. You can't buy it on the internet. Can't get it on the internet. That's right. So let's do the same thing on this side. And I think we're doing pretty good. Shall we check in with Isabel? Why are we checking with Fizzy? Uh, hey, ladies. I'm going to come around the other side. Okay. The lighting's good. Or ahead. where's the... Is this... Yes, this is really Set? nice. With the sunlight behind me. Oh, great. Okay, so I'm just kind of doing, this is probably like my favorite part actually. I like to do a little bit of personalization, a little bit of refining, and just making the haircut, you know, visually very beautiful. So just taking pieces, definitely comb all the hair at this point. I'm more focused on the outlines at this stage. And um, I like to comb all the hair down and just see how it lies. Um, flat and then if there's any little bits of kind of loose hairs or where it feels a little bit more dense in certain areas you can just kind of pick the hair up and almost take the flat of the blade and just run it down the surface of the hair and it's just going to make the hair in those areas um, a little bit skinnier and so it makes it more kind of flattering around the cheekbone and the eyebrow arch and also allows you to retain all this length in the, in the bottom and the outlines, which I think is really cool. Which again, when you expand, is gonna give you this really cool kind of square um, silhouette. And so I don't wanna to take too much from the fringe, the bangs area, more so from around the cheekbone and then definitely kind of where the parietal is, where the head starts to round there you can kind of see it almost looks more flattering when it's um, a little bit more head hugging. So just taking, again, just the flat of the blade. And when you hit, when the razor hits the hair, the actual razor is, is very, very light. And it's very, again, make sure you've really got that flat angle so that it's skimming down the hair and you're not taking the length and the weight. You're just making a little bit flatter. This is, I've got a question for you. Yes, please. I've got a question for you. You're a scissor hair cutter. Yeah. You've been razor cutting for how long? Uh, almost a year now. Oh, what's the difference? What do you tell me? Well, tell me what the preferences now. My preference is. Tell me what you like, what you don't like. Okay, so. Tell me what you want, what you really, really want. <laughs> tell you what I want, what I really, really want. <laughs> <laughs> so, what I love about the razor is you can really. Again, like you can really kind of personalize your haircuts with it, more so that it becomes something really edgy and like textured. And it's so, it's such a beautiful tool to use to create that kind of art. And you can create something very, very different to what you can with the scissor. So the scissor, you know, you've got this, you can get these really structured kind of, um, forms in the haircut and then the razor again like like you can see here like just the t touch of the razor like this is bringing so much openness and um texture and movement within a haircut and it allow again like talking about the hair it's like allows the hair to move in a different way which i think is really cool um you know people who have straight hair and want that kind of texture um it's, hard to, it's harder to achieve with the scissor. So with the razor, it just allows the hair to move and become something um, really cool and different to what you've, what you've had, I guess.
Yeah. In the salon now? Yes. Oh my god, I use it pretty much all the time. What, the razor? Yeah. So Definitely. How long did you work with a scissor? 12 years, maybe 13, 12, 13 years. That's actually crazy. <laughs> mm. I'm getting old. <laughs> no, but. Uh, what? <laughs> Am I almost a veteran now? Veteran? <laughs> I'm a dinosaur. You're not like me. You're not like me. <laughs> but yeah, I definitely think as well, like just the speed of creating those shapes is so much more simple and, and quick. And with the scissor, it's like if you want to create texture and movement and this kind of, um, you know, it's, it takes a lot longer with the shears. So it's, yeah, it's nice when you work on the 45 that you can get this kind of finish and, and, and look in that time with this tool, yeah. So there's many perks, but I definitely loved training with the shirt, the scissors, you know. Okay, so yeah, finishing. Again, just gonna take a little bit more weight from the cheekbone area. And then I'm literally just gonna get my hands in and just, I'm gonna put some products in and then I'll uh, dry it very free and, and loose. <laughs> <laughs> I do love the movement of your hair, Viv. Thank you. Right? And your hair is like super straight, isn't it? Yeah. And look at all this texture she's got. It's so cool. It's like it's straight and heavy. Yeah. And now it's light and texturized. Okay, so I'm gonna get some products guys. And I'm thinking we definitely need something in the roots to add some hold, um, something to kind of plump it out a little bit. So I'm going to get the wave mist and I think I'm going to use a little bit of styling cream as well just to give it that little bit of definition with the texture when it dries. Okay? Okay, young lady, come on over. Isabel's doing good today. She's doing quick. <laughs> I like that. Yay! All right, so... Now we've cut all the interior. We created shape around the ear. So shortness around the ear. Still kept the softness. Now it's time for me to just add a little bit more dynamic to the front. And I'm gonna pick up my razor now. Isabel got me excited. I'm gonna pick up my razor. I'm gonna go with my scissor comb for a little bit of a change. It's a little bit more refined. I want to keep the length here, but the temple's got to go. So uh, just let me bring up my hydro. Let's take the temple in. It'll make it stronger. And today, she's going to be going a different color. What color are you thinking? I like uh, either like bright blonde or like a blue, something, something cool. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Shamwow. <laughs> I can't wait for that. So I'm going to keep this length. I'm going to take out the temple. I'm going to take it out with a razor. Fine teeth of the comb. Put that razor real close to the, to, the, to the scalp. And just collapse that down very delicately. It's a more fluid tool, the razor. Not better than a scissor. Different. So the nice thing is I got, it's like an eraser. I can, sorry Isabel. I can, uh, <laughs> I can uh, just delicately, uh, you know, melt the hair out. Pinch, it's a very, I like to call it a tactile tool because you're kind of very tactile with your fingers. Not necessarily using the comb too, too much. But nice and tight in here. And we'll see. Not much to come off there. But in here where I've not cut, I'm not gonna take at length, I'm just gonna take out some of the bulk with the tippy tip tip. And that just gets that to move. I'm trying to get a marry, uh, uh, like a little relationship between this and this. Yes, yeah, so I want a relationship between the edges here and here. 
Now this stuff I don't like. See those like wiggly bits? And uh, if you cut the front short, which I'm gonna cut the front shorter, it's gonna be stronger. But I'm gonna do it with a razor too. I'm gonna punch this up a little bit sharper. This will make it more dynamic. Finger in, right in here, and using the flat of the blade for sharpness and softness. Do this little piece here too. You'll see the blade move in. I'll stay focused on this side. Come in, nice and tight, flat of the blade. Melt that away. Through here. Flat of the blade. Melt that away. So just by picking up my scissor comb to do the razor cutting, changed my kind of approach just a little bit it a little tighter, a little cleaner. And just through here, I'm just gonna pinch, pinch, pinch it away. So this is the detail work. A little detail work, flat of the blade. Just chopping it a little bit to create a little bit more space. The reason why the hair moves more when you razor cut is because you create more space a little sharper. Spin around this way. I've got to do the back too so your skate will stay with me for the back. So we're hitting March Madness, kicking off March Madness with our Arojo Underground which is on March the 8th, Sunday night on March the 8th at my Tribeca school location. Come and see, it's been completely redesigned. If you saw it a, few, a year ago, it's changed now. Then I head out to uh, Long Island for a program on the 15th. It's called Up Close with Nick in Long Island, Farmingdale. And then I head off to Iowa, Des Moines. I'm doing a three hour pickup razor class. Uh, all hands on, 225 is the cost. And then I'm doing a Happy Mondays and I have some guest hair artists working alongside me. That's Happy Mondays in Des Moines, Iowa. Then I head back to New York City. And, uh, from, uh, and the following weekend, I head out to the West Coast, Los Angeles. I'll be uh, at Planet Salon, teaching a classic, two-day classic cutting program, and also our American Wave certification. So nice and tight, that is. And then I come back from California and I finish the month of March off with uh, a class in New York, Razor Fundamentals. All of our education is available on erosiopro.com. You can check out all of our classes and we've really kick-started the year with uh, a lot of aggression with our, with our education. So we've been very uh, aggressive with our schedule, it means I'm working a lot, which is good. Keeps me out of trouble. So right now I need to keep the length, but I need to get a bit of transition. So I'll just comb that with the fine teeth, and then I'm just gonna melt that away. Notice how it's not the wrist, just the fingertips that works. Just the fingertips, so delicate, and I can just put space in. We have a new aesthetics class starting in March. Now we're offering, aest offering aesthetics at the Erosio School, our education center here in New York. And then we also have our barbering program. Our next barbering program starts in April. So definitely, if you want to learn barbering, definitely come and see us. And we'll be at the Barber Expo show. Yeah, uh, that's going to be in Connecticut. But we do have our big event coming up. What's our big event, Kate? Expo. Expo, May the 2nd, May the 2nd through to May the 4th. Expo is at the JFK Terminal, TWA. 
amazing venue. It'll be an amazing event. Don't miss out on that. It's going to be off the charts. All right, let's have a look at the back. Chin down for me. So there's the old ratatouille. <laughs> yeah, the tui ratty. Spray that in. And let's have a look and see. While we want to keep some of this length, we want to at least make it have a little bit more refinement. So it's natural. I, I, I don't want to, don't be too kind of uh, meticulous and cut everything off would be bad. And I'm taking my sections, coming the hair out, and let's just put the razor in and just tickle it. If you want to put a bit of space in there, you can just use your fingers and chunk out a little. Yeah, so this is the creative eye. This is the creative eye that you, that's up to you. Again, it's personal choice, personal preference. Let your eyes do the uh, assessment. You know, a lot of people, it's not your hands, it's your eyes. Your hands have to hold to control, but your eyes tell you what looks good and what doesn't. So allow those eyes to, allow your vision to guide you. Tipping right the way in. She's going to get colour today, so that's exciting. We work exclusively with L'Oreal Colour. That's a new thing for us. One of my young ladies, uh, Maddie, won the competition. The L'Oreal Colour and Style competition. She's representing America. And... Uh, Milan. Well, they just changed it. What? 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 Where are they going? What? You know, I got news for you, Kate. There's a virus going on. <gasps> Believe it or not, it's the I know Corona is where I am. <laughs> and they can't, they postponed it because the, you know, they had an outbreak in Rome. So, wow. we'll get the new date soon. So now I'm just gonna do a little cross checking. And I'm almost done. So the cut front shot makes it look stronger. And then what we'll do later when she's colored, oh, not, we'll, we've got a surprise color, we'll post it on my Instagram for you. And on the Orojo Instagram. And we'll put it on Orojo Social. And where else are we gonna do it? We'll do, well, I was thinking face morph. Oh, face morph. <laughs> wow. My new face favorite morph. app. What did you do to, uh, and Isabel's face morph. We turned her model into Billy Idol. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a laughter I can hear? Is she gulping for air? <laughs> <laughs> Billy Idol. You did a Billy Idol, did you? We did. Yeah, check out Arojo NYC. Kate's very. Uh, she's fun. She's fun. She's Follow great. us. Engage with us. We love it. <laughs> I'll just do a little. Final check through before I apply a little bit of product to the hair. Yeah, just a little refining. And we'll dry it and we'll rub some product in it and then she'll be ready for a color, color, color. See, that's what happens. Can't wait to see what color she L'Oreal color, <laughs> French. Color, color, color. Let's see how the others are doing. Okay, so we've just finished our low drag. And just kept it again, just nice and free with the dryer. And now I'm gonna just come back through with the scissors and just refine everything. Just check everything through. Again, just use the mirror and kind of lean the head towards yourself through here. And you can really assess the lines and like the out so the outlines and the texture inside as well. And I just like to come through and kind of take like a cross-checking technique, so sections in the opposite direction and just lift everything up and out and just really just point cut into it a little bit. Make sure there's no kind of loose hairs. No little strays. Are um, you gonna be an underground? So I will definitely 
Okay, underground. To first year. It's my first one. Very excited. Are you doing something? Yep, I have two models. I don't really want to tell you much more, but if you turn up, you're going to see something super cool. Like this, anyway. <laughs> but yeah, I'm super excited. It's my first one. It's going to be my first ex working expo as well. I've, seen, I've, been, I've come to visit and seen the expos before. In other words, she's drunk from the <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Usually just, usually just yelping in the background. <laughs> 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 uh, but yeah, it's going to be my first one working for Rojo for both. So I'm really excited to work with a fun, creative team. Hi, everyone just joining us. We are finishing up two cuts here. Hi, everybody. We have Nick and Laura, Isabel, and Viv. Vivian, but I, I decided to call her Viv. V. 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 She goes by Vivian, but I call her V. We're on the one last terms now. <laughs> call me anything except late for dinner. Except what? <laughs> so you can call me anything except late for dinner. Late for dinner, okay. Late for dinner. <laughs> I don't get it. Late for dinner. <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> Call, like, Let me apologize you for uh, for that. I know. You got it. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> Hi. Oh, look what the wind just blew in. <laughs> look what the wind just blew in. <laughs> there she is, our star, Lucy. It's a famous quote. That's what somebody said about the late for dinner. You can call me anything. Call me anything, but don't call me late for dinner. That one, that's a good one. Who did that? I got a good Winston Churchill. Got a good Winston Churchill one. What is it? Says you're drunk. She says, she says, madam, I may be drunk, but you'll still be ugly in the morning. <laughs> 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 we are not so out of it. Oh. What's that? Somebody said we're so out of it. I'm <laughs> out of it. Out of I what? feel like I am. <laughs> we're not <out> nothing. <laughs> Maybe she means, like, I didn't get the joke. Yeah. <laughs> These are high-level street jokes from Williams Bay. Street jokes from Broadway. Oy vey. Lamaka shlamaka. All right, just a little refining. I like, you know, like all this texture. It looks really good. And I'll just do a little point cutting. Just to soften. I've got strong hair. So I've cut this short like this before with a razor. I've cut it short before with a scissor. It's just nice to show different things. It's also nice for you as a stylist not to get bored behind the chair. And then I'm gonna use a product, a super strong product. And my collection of products, I'm very fortunate because I love my product. Yeah, it's a hairdresser's dream. And uh, when I say that, it's my dream. I'm a hairdresser, it's my dream. Developing hair care. See those beautiful products in the background? Here, I'll zoom. You zoom, baby. See them on display back there? there you right go. behind. A Rojo product. <laughs> yeah, you can join our ambassador program. A Rojo product, American Wave. And uh, you can connect with us. And uh, you can have your retail pay for your salon's education. Because that's what we do. And you can get connected to a true culture. In fact, we're going to do something about our ambassador program. We're going to put it online because we've done this for years. And I tell you what, over the years, I think our relationships have got stronger. It's up to you. If you as a salon owner wants to get connected to my brand, you can. Sometimes I just lift it, let it go. I agree. This it. cut does make her face look adorable. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I 
It's not the it's not the face. It's the rat's tail. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna get some beads for that. Just over the head. This is called. We call this over the head checking. Because I'm literally directly looking over the head. And I'm now on the, the razor comb as opposed to the scissor comb. So I'm breaking the rules, but that's okay. So I like to, you know, explain things, but I need the white teeth here. Give it a little bit more. Yeah, Cause she's got, actually got a, a lot of hair. She has a lot of hair. It's not fine hair. It's a lot of hair. I think we are done, done Now what we'll do, We'll clean off and then we'll put a little bit of product in. So let's take this off first. There's our towel. We found it, Isabel. We found it. We found the towel. Oh, she's coming off with the robe too. U.S. garbage collector. Probably. <laughs> nice. Did you sew that patch on yourself? I actually taped it. You taped it? Good, yeah. Oh, that's good. So I'm just finishing up with a little bit of the dry shampoo. And I can just put this into sections so I can see how pliable the product is. You can just kind of put your hands in and it just holds really well. That's the styling cream, by the way, which I love to work when I'm working with textured hair. It's got a hold to it, but it's still really soft. And also gives the hair a bit more definition as well. I love this length. So cute. Okay. Still got these nice little features in the back, in front of the ears. And you can like expand the shape a little bit as well, just to give you. <laughs> Gorgeous. Yeah. After you, after you, I went get in touch. Yeah, good, good. All right. Lucy's gonna color. Yeah. Yeah, you remember? Yeah. Right. We're, we're still filming, so. Oh, <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Alright, we're gonna use a little bit of this. Bend those knees, Kate. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> stuck. This is clay. I like this product because it's strong. Look at that. <laughs> it's my clay product. So, this is gonna make this hair thick and powerful. And stuck together. Yes, Rick, we will share this after on Facebook so you can watch the whole thing. <laughs> Whoa. So the clay is a super strong, pliable paste. A clay paste that just it makes the hair do things it doesn't want to do. So if you're looking for ultimate texture, the clay is a classic product for ultimate texture. Yeah, even though we didn't over texturize the haircut, you can see we can just bring out the piece in us. Let's do a little, a little dab will do you. Let's do it. And sometimes when you're working with this product, because it is such a strong product and a unique product, you can spray a little hydro on it just to give you just that little bit more slip to get it into the hair. But this really is a product, it doesn't dry stiff or hard, but it kind of thickens and mats up the hair. So it really is brilliant for when you're wanting to do something a little bit more extreme. You can see I can just pull these pieces. Is she ready for the red wall? Completely water soluble. So when she rinses it, it'll just come straight out. And uh, and I love just like the, what, it, what it gives you, little, yeah. uh, this is so like, just this is inspired for you, little elf. So cute. Little elf to cover the ear, <laughs> Yeah, little elf, elf love. Yeah, elf pawn. Elf ear support group. Elf pawn. <laughs> That's what we're doing these days. <laughs> what did that woman say on the Instagram? We've lost it, we've lost our marbles. Yeah. <laughs> That's what she said. Who said that? Somebody. You forgot already. Ugh. You forgot already. Look, she, she's forgot, she's forgot what she even said. About the joke. You have a classic case. Oh, that we're so out of it. ADD. A little bit. Yeah? <laughs> I'm Nick.
This is Laura. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> that over there is the Princess Isabel. And I think we're about ready for my favorite part of the segment. Are we? Red wallet. Red wall reveal. Red wall reveal. Over to the red wall, please. Let's just head over. I'll take the off here. Somebody sing. It's the red wall time. <laughs> what did you sing? Is we gotta right? let it shine. What did we sing last week? <laughs> we are live. Oh, I forget our theme song. We gotta add a score. Oh, yeah, you know what? Tick tock? Tick tock. Tick tock. Tick tock. Tick tock. Tick tock. Yeah, is it that? Honestly. Oh, thank you. Was there a badge there? She did not. Oh, <gasps> she took her tape. She took her. Where is it? Let's have a look at it. I am so sorry. It was a joke. It was like, look at it all. Sticky bandit. Get some clay. <laughs> clay. Clay and fiber. She technically is a garbage collector. <laughs> there, there we go. go. Oh no, this is legit. It's oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Gorgeous so garbage You're collector. Okay. We love it. Yeah. It's nice to do Notice it. Like... How we got them the perfect yeah, height. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We always we check, we check, it's the perfect height, isn't it? You know, yeah. that's what we do. It's the perfect duo, you guys are You guys so are good cool. together. We're going to post some pictures, surfs, all that good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Give us a twirl, let's have a look at the back. Oh. Yes. That Very clay. Clay's good, yeah, look at that. <laughs> Now we're gonna make her blonde and then we're gonna color it a different color. Man, it's gonna be fizzy, that's gonna be loosey goosey. What are you gonna use, loosey goosey? <gasps> come on in. You, come on in. <gasps> no, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Still wind this, is, this is my pineapple tree. Yeah. Oh, I'm a Jamaica man. <laughs> what color do you wanna be? I don't know, maybe like. Let's not tell them. Uh, okay, surprise. Yeah. Surprise. Maybe you should guess the reveal. Yeah. You know what we can do? If you lift it, why don't we make some of these edges just a little bit more uh, pronounced? I love that. You know? We could like melt it from something like, here yeah, down. Yeah, melt it. Onto oh, this. No. Little, Tune right. in later to Orojo yeah. NYC to see what we do. I like that. You're going to see you, Kate. You say bye to everybody because they okay. like Okay, I'm going to start doing this every yeah. week, guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> bye. Thanks for joining bye. us.